Wally, these are my notes. Okay. Hello, I really wanted to talk about my experience of being Asian and put it online for some reason. Since I don't actually officially introduce myself, my name is Liana. Thank you so much for watching this video. Back to the actual video. So I know a ton of other Asian creators on YouTube especially have been making videos about their Asian experiences. Another thing is, is I didn't actually say that it is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month and that's why all these creators are making videos about being Asian. Okay, this will be the last time I do this. Dustin Vong and and Jessie Lee have made videos in like the past two weeks maybe and I really wanted to talk about my experience especially because I am born and raised in Charlottesville, Virginia that is notoriously known for August 11th and 12th. I have my notes of how I want this video to go. I never make sit down videos. I first wanted to talk about my heritage and my background. So my dad is Taiwanese. He was born in Taiwan. He moved to America when he was three. And my mom is Japanese and Chinese and she was born in New York. She's Japanese on her mom's side, Chinese on her dad's side. So I am half Taiwanese, a quarter Chinese, and a quarter Japanese. When people ask me what ethnicity I am, I generally just say East Asian. Growing up in Charlottesville, as you know, since I said Earlier, the Great Seville is known for the Unite the Right rallies that happened, but I'm gonna talk about my experience of growing up in Charlottesville before we talk about that. So you have a background of where I stand on being Asian and stuff. This is mainly gonna be me talking about my experience in public school. I've been going to public school since kindergarten. I have almost graduated at this point, so been K through 12 public school. I've liked it definitely for the most part, but one thing, especially around my area, is it's very white. There are a ton of white people around here. When I entered elementary school, all of these white kids were asking me where I came from, if I spoke Chinese or Japanese, when did I immigrate? They didn't know any better. They were ignorant. I don't blame them for saying those things. I hope that they learned from saying those things that they were not right and they should not say those things. The most distressing interaction that I can remember from elementary school is when I was six, this girl at lunch was telling me that Japanese eyes go down and Chinese eyes go up and that's why my eyes are so even and she was pulling her eyes back while well, she was uh, telling me that and I believed her because I didn't have any other reason to not believe her. I didn't know any better. Quickly another one of the kids at the table was like what are you talking about? Like, that's not real. You're just being racist. She didn't know she was being racist. I don't remember if she owned up to being racist or if she said sorry, but... Yep. Yeah. I still think about that interaction to this day because I know her now and she's cool and we talk and it's fine. I don't think she remembers that because to her she was probably just telling me another fact that she learned from her parents or the internet uh, but for me it was a racist comment that I'll remember my entire life I was even invited to her birthday party that year as well and she hung out with me the entire time it just it really shows that kids don't really know what they're saying can affect or hurt people I went to the whitest middle school that 
feeds into my high school. I was confused when I got to high school because I was like, why are there so many people of color? Why were there none at like my middle school? Basically, Charlottesville City has a lot more people of color than the surrounding county. And since I'm in the surrounding county and I'm very north in the surrounding county, a lot of the people I went to school with were white. And if you're closer to Charlottesville City, but you still go to a county school, you're gonna end up at the high school that I went to. And that's why there were a lot less people of color in my middle school. That's just how it happened. When I say that I am in a very white population, I was the only fully Asian female who graduated my fifth grade class of 88 kids. I'm gonna put the ratio of white people and people of color of my graduating class on the screen now. Also haven't looked back at middle school. I think it's a little better with middle school, but there are around 200 kids graduating from that class. Maybe I'll do the math and I'll put it up here. I want to explain that when I say that we are the whitest population, if you look at the numbers, it doesn't look as bad, but compared to the other middle schools, it's quite bad. I don't know for high school, like I said, there was a surge of people of color because of the other middle schools that fed into my high school. So I was very thankful for that. But unfortunately, I did not actually see those people a lot at all because I was put in honors classes and they were not. That's another video. There's some racial disparity in education. Anyway, Jazzy Lee said this in her video that she made last week, but I'm also going to say it because I related to it so much because, but when I was in middle school, I really wanted to be white. I wanted to be white so badly. I would go to sleep every night and hoped that I would wake up white. I hoped that I had blonde hair and blue eyes and really fair skin. I just really wanted to be white because I thought that being white meant that I could fit in, that I could live life simpler. It just seems easier for white people to gain mass following on social media platforms. I've noticed that a lot because all they really have to do is be very Eurocentric with their beauty standards and people seem to really like them. It seems there's another level of talent you have to have if you're a person of color for people to enjoy your content. You can't just be pretty because you might not have all of the Eurocentric beauty standards that people want to see. Especially TikTok, you see that a lot see a lot of people being popular for just being pretty. And the people of color creators don't really get that mass following unless they're really, really funny or they know how to sing or they're really good at filmmaking or know how to do really good makeup. There's just a divide between expectations for people of color and white people. If I put the audio to this, I would get demonetized, not that I'm making any money off of this, but uh, just imagine Playdate by uh, Melanie Martinez is playing in the background. In middle school, there were some guys that didn't go to my elementary school, so they didn't have time to ask me their ignorant comments then. Um, they mainly were just racist. They were racist. And they just used to shout racist things or tell me racist things um, about how I'm Chinese or Japanese. They didn't know the difference between Chinese and Taiwanese, so they 
didn't have that. Regardless of how they were teasing me, they were still teasing me uh, about my race and about something I could not change about myself. I was also really insecure in middle school. I feel like most people are really insecure in middle school. So that did not help with my self-confidence. Being put down for something that I can't change about myself didn't do wonders to my ego. Sometime at the end of freshman year, I started discovering K-pop actually. Before it was this huge mass following, before BTS blew up, I was there, I was I was a K-pop stand for a year and a half of my life, maybe two years, I don't really remember. Even though K-pop has some weird reputations for some people, it helped me be proud of who I am and I'll forever be grateful to K-pop because of that. I'm also a lot more confident in my Asian features, like having a flat face and flat nose and my eyes, all of these things that I used to be insecure about were being seen in the media and I think that's really cool. I'm gonna now talk about the rallies and basically how it affected the people that live in Charlottesville and how it affected me personally. When it was happening in real time, it didn't really affect me that much. It was really the aftermath that seemed to affect Charlottesville the most. I don't really want to go into what the rallies were, uh, how they originated, who Heather Hare is, um, and how she died. These things are really important. They're not for this video. I'm gonna leave a ton of links in the description about what August 11th and August 12th are. If you don't know, it's a part of our history. Get educated and learn more about it because something like that should never happen again. It's horrible. I cannot believe that something like that would happen nowadays after everything that has been done already for civil rights. It was just kind of a setback for America and especially for Charlottesville. It left this town feeling really dirty and violated and defeated. We were once just known for having Monticello and a lot of wineries and UVA and being a college town, but now we had the weight of these rallies to also hold. After the rallies were happening, a ton of people on social media were posting about how they have never seen racism in Charlottesville before, they have never known Charlottesville to be such a hateful place. And it left me with a sour mouth, to say the least, because these were the same people that had asked ignorant questions and didn't really want to learn from me, or these were the people that were being completely racist towards me. It was like they were excusing their little actions because of this big event that happened, but you can't do that. Of course the Unite the Right rally was extremely terrible and I would never try to compare my experiences with them. It was just odd to me that these people were trying to voice some sort of truth that wasn't actually there because I've seen racism here. They can try to erase it, but I have seen it here before the rallies were happening, especially because of now with coronavirus and it originating in Wuhan, China, I fear when my parents have to go grocery shopping because I don't know how people are gonna react to seeing an Asian person um, in public. I know there's a lot of people that have been going out to walk in different places. I don't feel safe doing that. I've seen a ton of people on social media that were being racist towards Chinese people, maybe even Asian people in general. Some people 
don't care to know the difference between Asian countries. Yeah, it just scares me a lot. So what is my relationship with Charlottesville? It is strange. It's very confusing. I don't feel safe here. I feel very alienated. I feel isolated. I feel like I can only be my true self when I'm in a private setting with people I trust. I just want to stress that I have enjoyed a lot of things about living here and being here. I've made so many wonderful friendships that I know I'm going to carry. I do really like where I grew up to an extent for sure. Sure, I'm a big Bodas fan and I love Seville coffee, but I never see myself coming back here or wanting to live here again. I really am excited to go and live in the city. I'm going to hopefully be attending VCU Arts in the fall. There's going to be a lot more diversity. I'm going to feel hopefully a lot more included <laughs> in things. I think my time living in Charlottesville is over. I think I really need to get out. I'm really excited to be around more people of color and to feel more accepted. Where am I now with how I view my Asian identity? I know my experience is just my own, for sure. My sister is younger than me and she has not faced this type of racism that I have faced going to public school. She actually has had a really good experience. Her friend group is diverse. She knows a lot of people that are people of color. It's just a luck of the draw. I really wanted to give my perspective because I haven't really seen anyone talk about Charlottesville and living in Charlottesville as a person of color. This is really serious, Wally. Stop snoring. Oh my gosh. I'm really confident in being Asian now with my features, my culture. I'm really trying to incorporate more of my Asian culture into my everyday life. I want to feel more connected to it as I felt so disconnected to it for a really long time. And yep, it's always a process to learn more about my ancestors and my background, but I'm really excited to keep learning more and to hopefully in the future I want to carry my Asian culture to my kids and hopefully maybe they can carry it to theirs. Who knows? Here are some awesome Asian YouTubers that you should check out if you don't know them about them already. They make really awesome videos and I really look up to them and I enjoy their content a lot. And thank you so much for watching this video. It's probably really long. So thank you for sitting through it if you've watched the whole thing. And have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon night, whatever.